Hello again, it's uh, Joey John McGuire. Um, I mean, uh, my favourite uh, local uh, pub in Fulham Broadway. Uh, it's called the Broadway Bar. Uh, very nice pub, very popular. I've been in here many times before. A um, bit different to uh, my normal watering holes, which are Weatherspoon's pubs. My hero is Tim Martin. Anyway, enough of the nonsense. Uh, Joey John McGuire, the English poet, and I'm about to recite my latest poem, which I wrote at about two o'clock this morning, which is the normal time for me. Uh, and it's actually the longest poem I've ever written in my life. And I've written a lot of poems, believe me. Triggered by someone who threatened me yet again, uh, which brings back uh, some very desperate memories to me uh, as a victim. And the poem is called A Victim's Lot. Sorry for the sadness, but it's called A Victim's Lot. I didn't expect to get preferential treatment, and I don't know why on this occasion. I had expected people to understand, but it was certainly true I had been a victim of a very heinous crime. My life was in tatters. My future held little other than uncertainty. I was vulnerable, beyond the reach of all imaginings, almost like a newborn child. Though they are drooled over babies, I was treated like a rabid dog, deserted by my friends and neighbours, like I was some strange liability. It seemed I had the plague. Ting a ling, they could hear the bell ringing miles away. Overnight, it seemed I became a monster, and they all crossed the road in avoidance on catching sight of me, to leave me helpless and alone though not so cruel as to actually tell me I was no longer welcome. Instead, they merely cast me out to leave me gasping in a soulless vacuum of insanity. The help I so desperately needed always seemed to be for one reason and another beyond my visual horizons. So after years of painstaking searching, when it finally did arrive, it was often the wrong kind of help. Begrudged, ill thought out, too little, too late always. Cold, callous help, dished up on a cold platter, a disgusting accompaniment of compassionless sentiment, void of any real direction. Desperation had seen me avoid the onslaught. I had cheated death. In itself a feat unbelievable. How I had survived the help, nothing short of a miracle. As one psychiatrist put it, I'm surprised you're still alive and no one can take credit for that was my reply, other than I. I submitted to their commands, did what they asked of me, both in desperation but mainly through fear of being dropped to fend alone. And I was quick to forgive my assailant, knowing I must, in order to move on. There were too many tears. Normal people don't cry that many, I'm sure. And I spent the next decade scavenging on the scrap heap of society, my new home. With the drip, drip of hope, the only thing keeping me alive, that and the constant fear of the many rats nibbling at my toes. So imagine how it felt to be made an outcast, a leper, avoided by the very people my naivety had allowed me to presume would be my saviors. How it felt when I was to discover 
But for me, there would be no safety net. There would be no escaping the terrible indignity of destitution that lay ahead. It was happening to me. Real-time drama, an ex paratrooper with no criminal record, a good man, the father of two beautiful children, a worker and provider who'd never raised a fist in anger towards his fellow man. Again, imagine how it felt. To be told it was my own fault, it was my choice to join the army, my own stupid fault. And then there were whispers, meant to be in earshot. He must have done something. Drugs, robbery, paedophile, rapist, something. It's his own fault. And anyway, what's he doing here, his kind? They always send them here, his kind. He must have done something. He only got what he deserved. He's just another bum, fit for nothing. And then, the long silences, the salt and pepper silences that were the spices that fueled the gossip. Coventry. It's a punishment posting. I can't find the words to tell you I, how much it hurt to be sent there for an indefinite period. And to this day I struggle to understand why it was I readily gave my assailant why it was I readily forgave my assailant when I can't explain why it is I can never forgive those who judged innocence to let me down so cruelly in my time of desperate need. Maybe I am a misfit not meant for this world. Maybe I am too good to be true, an imposter. Maybe I'm just too naive or maybe they were all right to judge me that I was the author of my own demise, who in the end got only what I deserved, in that I ripped exactly what I've sown. That's simple. I am still alive, surviving and still forgiving, still incredibly naive. Though I know more than most, I am still more than ever looking for the best in people and I still positively refuse to be bitter towards those who accused and failed me. But I would be lying to myself and you if I was not to add how deeply saddened I was by their failures. Those people who on witnessing my dreadful plight chose to turn their backs and in the kangaroo court pass judgment after failing to understand.